Craving the perfect holiday snack? Check out Farmer Bill's Biltonk. Think beef jerky, but better. No sugar, no preservatives, just pure animal protein goodness. Crafted from premium grass-fed beef or bison and air-dried to perfection, Farmer Bill's Biltong is nutrient-packed, energy-dense, and perfect for an on-the-go treat or a standout snack for your next party. My favorite is the original bison, but the other flavors like the original beef, smokehouse, and spicy chili have me second-guessing that choice more than once. Visit FarmerBillsProvisions.com to grab a one-pound slab or a variety pack and use code BIZBIT10 for 10% off. Farmer Bills Biltong, don't be the two-liter guy at this year's Christmas party. Bitcoin built the scuba shop, you know, so every board that's on there and the resources that we had to be able to take this venture, to start this venture, came from proceeds from, you know, Bitcoin investments over the years. I'm very grateful for that. And, and, and also I'm passionate on a bigger scale. I think Bitcoin will do that and more for, you know, mankind as a whole. I go down to the scuba shop, you know, to work, of course, but it's not far before we're, we're you know, having a conversation about uh, a Bitcoin and, and its implications on the boat or between surface intervals. And because we're branded that way, we've got deep thinker shirts that have the Bitcoin logo on them. It's a talking point for our guests that come in and they themselves want to learn a little bit more about Bitcoin or what our association with Bitcoin is. They want to know if I work for Bitcoin. Uh, and so it, it's, it's, it's just a good conversation starter and we make the most of it when we can. Welcome to the Business Bitcoinization Show, the show dedicated to helping you enrich your life and grow your business with Bitcoin, the hardest money on planet Earth. I'm your host, Josh Friedemann, and our guest today is Emilio Castillo, who's the owner of The Scuba Shop, an online retailer of scuba equipment and a local dive operation in Roatan, Honduras. Emilio is also a Bitcoin collector. Now, the scuba shop is operating in Roatan within the Prospera jurisdiction. I've interviewed Joel Baumgar, who's the president of Prospera before. And if you want to learn more about what Prospera is, I encourage you to go back and listen to that episode as well. Before we get to our interview with Emilio, we do have this week's Bitcoin Meetup Spotlight. And this week, it is the Satoshi Service Center in Toledo, Ohio. Ready to join the Bitcoin real life revolution? Look no further. Toledo Bitcoin in Ohio has continued to be the bleeding edge of Bitcoin development, community, and networking. Meetups and workshops are throughout downtown weekly, and they're also available virtually, so there's no excuse not to join the fun. Virtual members join from across the pond in Europe and Asia. Follow them on Twitter at Toledo Bitcoin and get connected with their wider Satoshi Service Center network of 14 Bitcoin only meetups with over 7000 Bitcoiners in the Midwest. The next workshop in February is all about beginning your KYC free Bitcoin journey. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned Bitcoiner, be a part of the revolution with Toledo Bitcoin. Once again, you can find them on Twitter at Toledo Bitcoin. Now, if you're interested in joining a Bitcoin meetup and you're not in the Toledo area, I encourage you to download the Oshi app where you'll be able to find the closest Bitcoin meetup to you. Now, we're going to get to our interview with Emilio right after this. Business owners, unlock the benefits Bitcoin has to offer your business with the Bitcoin for Business Quick Start Guide. This 27-page guide highlights the six ways you can grow your business with Bitcoin. Check it out in the show notes. Emilio, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. So I like to start off every single interview with a few questions that help us to get to know you a little bit better and give us some insight for our own lives. Are you ready for these? Yes, sir. When and how did you first learn about Bitcoin? Uh, 2011. Uh, I've got an online forum, the Electric Forum, and we had some guys on there just chatting it up. And uh, in the context of it being you know, uh, money that was difficult to, to be seized. And so that perked my interest. I thought that idea was a good one. And so I, I went down the rabbit hole. So I'm very curious about that. Uh, we don't always have people who have been in Bitcoin that long. I mean, you're a true OG. I'm curious to know if, um, you know, there were, I, I just think back, you know, I, I came into Bitcoin in 2021. So you've been, you beat me by a decade. Were there times where uh, you were kind of shaken along the way i'm just curious to know for people who have been in it that long because i look back and i think what i've stuck it out with all the ups and downs and twists and turns along the way 
Uh, there was a time, just uh, generally speaking, in 2000, maybe 18 or so, when it took, it was the first major correction that I'd kind of had money in it. Uh, that got me thinking, you know, there's, there's anybody who tell you that it doesn't is probably lying to you. Same thing with, with this recent drop, you know, you know, you, you, you definitely think through it, you know, but, uh, I'd say that, uh, once it starts going up and you go through a couple of them and, and then you, you get used to it and, and you understand that volatility is part of the show. Yeah. Well, and I will say that for someone coming in 2020, 2021, 2022 and beyond, I feel like the network is just really strong now. And so it, it seems like I'm sure there are going to be a lot of um, twists and turns ahead. But this last year for me, my my confidence in what Bitcoin is and what I expected it to be has not really been shaken by the fact that there's been such a price downturn, which is something that, you know, 2011, 13, 17, you wouldn't have necessarily had that. Once again, respect to you. Second question is this, what's an insight or fact about Bitcoin that you wish everyone understood? Uh, I, pr I hope that I wish people knew, thought of Bitcoin more of as of an invention and, and, and less of a money. You know, we think of the hardest money. It is the hardest money. But above all things, it's a very powerful security protocol. And it's, and it's an invention to send money anywhere uh, over long periods of time without an intermediary. But you're sending value. So, you know, you could send a message. You can uh, um send value, you know, so so I think if you think of Bitcoin in the context of it being an invention, um, that we're doing something for the first time that we've not been able to do, send a unique uh, digital signature across time and space, um, I think people would be more open to it um, from the beginning, yeah. And in fact, I would go further and say that it would be the greatest invention of our lifetimes next to the, you know, even over the internet, the internet would be the greatest thing that uh, has been invented in our lifetimes. It's changed the way we do business, the way we do commerce, uh, and things of that. And this is a software upgrade to the internet. You know, the software, lay the the value layer on top of it. So, uh, if people saw it in that context, and they say, you know, this is going to change our lives in the same way or in a similar way that the internet itself changed our lives, then I think people would would almost have to embrace it as a inevitable reality of their future, you know, as opposed to uh, it being presented as, hey, there's the dollar and there is Bitcoin. Which one do you prefer, the volatile one or the stable one that's backed by the government in air quotes, you know? Uh, so I think the framing of Bitcoin pigeonholing it into a, a currency money first is is oftentimes a hurdle we've got to overcome. Mm. So question number three is this. What is the Bitcoin resource that you most recommend to other people? A good one out there is hope.com. You know, uh, Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy, they've done a good job of having a catchy domain, but they've consolidated a lot of the low-hanging, easy-to-process resources in video form, podcast form, articles, um, and they do a good job of just curating uh the noise, you know, and there's definitely a lot of noise out there and a lot of people who uh, may or may not have a proper outlook on Bitcoin, you know, or have distractions on, on other altcoins and things of that nature. So I think hope.com is a good place, especially for a newbie, a normie to to sort of go in there and safely consume information without uh, him being distracted with something that's probably not 100 percent accurate. The next question is this, beyond Bitcoin, what is a resource, an idea, or a tool that's been helpful to you or your business recently? Well, uh, if you're talking about just a tool and recently, uh, you can't go too far without throwing chat GPT into the equation, you know? So uh, I am a online uh, marketer of some sort with different websites that are lead generation uh, uh, websites uh, in the tourism space. Uh, so you know, being able to generate content uh, that I can curate and make my own fairly easily without having to sit there and type it all out is good. Having uh, so I'd probably put Chat GPT in that in that category. So you're not the first person to recommend that tool. I know a lot of people have played with it, but I do want to hear from you because you're someone who's using it. 
what are some ways that business owners who are listening to this podcast can be thinking through how to use it effectively in their business and maybe even speak directly to how you've used it? Just some very practical ways people can make their lives easier using chat GPT. Well, I would say that first be cautious with it. Don't don't grab it and think it's a be all end all, you know. So if you're using it specifically in my purpose uh, to generate content online, we still have questions around how the search engines are going to process, recognize it and look at it, whether we're going to be demoted for, you know, saturating our websites with, you know, artificial intelligent generated content or whether or not, you know, uh, Google will allow for it, you know, in terms of their algo and their SEO um, you know, filters. So I would say be careful with that. Uh, secondly, I would probably uh, make a point of saying that whenever we were, we had the ability to become a blog, uh, and individual people could, could curate their content. You know, the initial thought was that we would get rid of the Wall Street journals and the big, big boys, you know, and that hasn't happened. What, what's end up happening is you get this layer of uh, a massive layer of content generators, but that layer has been poorly written documentation, bad information, false information, uh, and so you ended up not. It ended up be not being true that the big boys are going to go away as a result of blockchain uh, blogs and individual people's hands, you know. But what Chat GPT does is that it will grab the the layman, the mass production of of articles and information, and I think it'll give them some organization, some accuracy in terms of generating. So you don't have individuals making up stuff as they write along. They'll start out with something that has better sources and 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 is more intelligent, so to speak, as a as a as a base layer. So I would say be cautious with it. Be cautious with it, but at the same time, it's, it's it seems to be uh, a game changer. I mean, I, I haven't been excited about a piece of tech like this it's bitcoin you know and it's it's mm -hmm. it's i think it'll it'll change how we produce and uh the accuracy of how we produce things so you said something that i had heard others mention as i've done some research into chat gpt you may or may not be able to speak to it more but people have talked about how and you just mentioned that some search engines might not like the fact that you have ai generated content I'm curious to know how Google and others might be able to recognize that, especially if you take it and edit it. Are there just certain imprints or is there a way to know the the ultimate source of the writing? Do you have any insight there or do you just recognize that it's a problem or a potential problem out there? It's garbage in, garbage out technology, right? So if you are really good at asking it questions or giving it directions, you'll probably get a higher degree of content, a better quality content than if you would just gave it an open-ended statement and it just started to go and write something on the fly. But I mean, you have ways of curating material for as far back as as we can think of. I mean, the Bible itself, they used to have several other books that were part of it that were discarded over time because as you read them, they didn't have the the, the level of granularity or detail that wasn't there. So, for instance, if somebody were to write about the island of Roatan and uh, it's just uh, chat GBT, tell me something about Roatan, it might talk about generalities and talk about an island and water and uh, but it may not get down into the capital being cocked in a hole. It may not get down into the Great Barrier Reef or the type of marine life that we might actually find there. So I think starting out with a good framework of ChatGBT, but then coming back and adding granular details uh, would become more credible. I mean, at the end of the day, Google is in the business of pairing a quality question with a quality response, okay? And they know how they have different metrics to figure out whether or not the user considered that response good, right? Bounce rate, you know, how deep did you scroll down a page? So if you're writing content that's engaging people, that they're finding accurate, uh, that doesn't have a, a bounce rate um, that's unacceptable, I think ultimately it will be uh, accepted, accepted by the uh, algorithms, you know. But to my knowledge right now, it still needs a lot of, you know, um, knowledge and information that is it's not referencing on its own so now we have our final arbitrary but insightful question and is this as a general life principle is it better to ask why or why not 
Uh, I, I think why is a better deal. Our minds are not really geared for the negative, right? So if I tell you not to think of a tree, your first thing is you're going to visualize a tree. So if you're skiing down a mountain and you're, you're saying don't hit the tree, you'll probably end up hitting a tree. You, you have to focus on the pathway in between the trees, you know, and focus on the positive. So I would, I, I, I tend to always try to have a mindset on, 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 on the positive and not on the negative. Therefore, why versus why not? You know, it's, I'd say we go with the why. Meet Linkster, your premier Bitcoin-focused advisor. Linkster caters to businesses, institutions, family offices, and high net worth individuals. They merge your unique financial goals and needs with Linkster's Bitcoin expertise to craft your own sustainable plan to preserve and grow the value of your hard-earned profits and retained earnings. At Linkster, it's not just advice, it's tailored execution. Connect directly with the founder by visiting Linkster.com. That's L-Y-N-C-S-T-E-R. Dot com. Linkster, secure your future with Bitcoin. Today's episode of Business Bitcoinization is proudly brought to you by Vellus Commerce, where the future of business technology meets Bitcoin. As we journey through the era of Bitcoin and its transformational impact on businesses, there's one name that stands out. Vellus Commerce. Whether you're looking to build a cutting edge website, a seamless mobile app, or custom software, Vellus is your go to team. They've been diving deep into the world of Bitcoin since 2014, making them one of the most experienced groups for integrating Bitcoin and Lightning payments into a variety of digital platforms. But here's what truly sets them apart Vellus Commerce doesn't just build, they bring a wealth of knowledge to ensure your project success from day one. Their team understands the nuances of Bitcoin, ensuring that your business stays ahead of the curve. And for all business Bitcoinization listeners out there, Vellus Commerce is offering a free consultation to kickstart your project the right way. So if you're ready to future proof your business in the coming age of hyper Bitcoinization, head over to VellusCommerce.com or reach out on Twitter at Vellus Commerce. Let's make Make sure your business thrives in the Bitcoin era. Well, Emilio, today we're here to talk about you and your scuba shop, Bitcoin, accepting Bitcoin in your business, and a number of other things in that vein. To start off, could you share with us a little bit about how you got to the scuba shop and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? So I got there following my passion. I'm a, a diver. I enjoy scuba diving quite a bit, and I've got uh, a handful of things that are of interest to me. Photography is one of them. Videography is another. Uh, writing content, my country of Honduras. Uh, and so a scuba shop on a tropical island uh, sort of brought all those all those uh, interests together. OK. And then um, when uh, Prospera announced Bitcoin as, you know, essentially legal tender within that region, I figured, you know, putting a scuba shop there uh, will combine another interest of mine, which is Bitcoin. So the scuba shop is a unique dive center where you can come out, you can dive. Uh, it's a highly creative environment, but at the same time, we are Bitcoin friendly. Uh, while I'm a hodler first, I definitely encourage people to come and spend their Bitcoin in exchange for scuba services. And so real quick, when it comes to Prospera, we have interviewed the Prospera president, Joel Baumgar, in a previous episode. Listeners can go look back for that. There'll probably be a link in the show notes. Um, but I'm kind of curious about the the difference between operating within Prospera versus somewhere else on the island of Roatan. Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. So the I I actually started the scuba shop outside of Prospera, and to get uh, you know an operating permit was a nightmare. Honestly, it took a while, and uh, and uh, there were several inspections and just a long list of things that we had to hurdles that we had to get overcome just to you know, be in compliance. Um, Fast forward, you know, post COVID, we built the, the, the scuba shop, uh, did a major remodeling right there on the beach. Uh, and we did that, you know, essentially in half the time, you know, 30 days, we had a building built and we were operational. So just from a, a, a business friction standpoint, you know, in terms of uh, testing a product, bringing a product out to market, see if there's going to be an interest from the end user. Uh, while also reducing the the uh, the cost of launching a business, I think that's that's the biggest trade off so far, you know. And at the same time, because they're uh, sort of uh, spearheading a lot of initiatives, you know, uh, delivery drones. Uh, uh, there's a Bitcoin training center on the hill. Um, there's a lot of uh, a renovation with the new a new resort there. 
uh, they're just attracting, you know, foreign interest quite a bit. You know, people from uh, from from uh, the U.S., from Europe, they're they're all visiting there. They have uh, residential towers going up. So uh, just the, the momentum and the general synergies that, that you feel when you're there are, are strong and certainly much more uh, uh, present than, than anywhere else on the island. Mm. So I imagine that for any business on Roatan, there's going to be a lot of visitors, people coming in on cruise ships, international visitors of different types. How many Hondurans are coming through your shop versus other people, as well as how many people kind of are, are going to your scuba shop because they're visiting Prospera versus you're the best scuba shop on the island? Yeah, so we definitely get a lot of people because they're visiting Prospera. That's that's probably expected and understandable. However, we as a scuba shop did not uh, do not tailor our marketing towards the cruise ship guest. Although we do get some of those, um, and and that's the primary source of of, of of economic injection into the island are foreigners that come in and are tourists. Okay, uh, but we've just taken a different approach that we focus our attention on the local community that lives there year round. So uh, I'd say 80, 90 percent of our customer base are expats that live on Roatan. They bought a home in Roatan. We'll pick them up from their their dock, you know, so they'll come from their home down to the water's edge and we pick them up, take them, dive them, bring them back to their to their dock and and say goodbye to them you know so uh we just think it's a better long-term strategy to build very local relationships on the northern shore of the island of roatan and have those people be repeat customers you know so while we get cruise shippers that's not really the focus the focus of our of our marketing or or efforts and your website and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's scuba.shop. Is that correct? Scuba.shop. It's a new uh, top-level domain, so not .com or .org. It's .shop, scuba.shop. Yeah. It seems like a lot of your your content on there is uh, Bitcoin or Bitcoin adjacent. Do you spend a lot of time trying to uh, orange pill people, or is that just something that you have in your shop to bring up conversations? How does the Bitcoin piece fit into your day-to-day work with customers? Well, I'll start out by saying that Bitcoin built the scuba shop, you know, so every board that's on there and 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 the resources that we had to be able to take this venture to start this venture came from proceeds from, you know, Bitcoin investments over the years, you know, so uh, I'm very grateful for that. And, and, and also I'm passionate on a bigger scale. I think Bitcoin can do that. Uh, we'll do that and more for you know, mankind as a whole, you know, and, and so it's a passion of mine. And I go down to the scuba shop, you know, to work, of course, but that work is my passion and, and, and what I enjoy doing. So it's, it's, it's not far before we're, we're, you know, having a conversation about uh, a Bitcoin and, and its implications on the boat or between surface intervals. Uh, and because we're branded that way, we've got, you know, deep sinker shirts, deep thinker shirts that have the Bitcoin logo on them. Uh, it's a talking point for our guests that come in and they themselves want to learn a little bit more about Bitcoin or what our association with Bitcoin is. They want to know if I work for Bitcoin. Uh, and so it, it's, it's, it's just a good conversation starter and we make the most of it when we can. Yeah. And then I'm also curious about the, the deep thinker side of things. I'm assuming uh, deep is connected to the scuba side, but what what is the the connection between Bitcoin and thinking, at least the that you make for the people you're talking to? So as scuba divers, we think about going deep. So that's uh, part of the the deep thinker theme that we have. But also Bitcoiners in their own right are deep thinkers, right? I mean, uh, most of the smart people that I've met don't know anything about Bitcoin or what it does, you know, what the implications of it are. So we're extremely early, you know, a lot of thought leaders. Uh, I would say the top of the top are, are, are learning and investing a lot of time in Bitcoin because they understand what it is. But that's a very small minority relative to, you know, the global population. So Deep Thinker is just a kind of a, a, a um, play on words and it has a double meaning. You know, people who like to ponder, uh, people who like to go deep into the water, the, the ocean, you know. So um, we just thought that was a catchy phrase and we've we've hang, we've hung on to it. And then also maybe what what are the percentage of people that want to pay in Bitcoin versus that are still paying in fiat? 
So that number is increasing because we've added a 10% discount for anybody who wants to pay in Bitcoin. So when you, you know, scuba diving is not cheap. And when you get somebody the bill and, and, and also, also the option of reducing that bill by 10%, you know, there's a lot of people who, who uh, decide they want to do that. And you know? so I would say the majority of people still play, still pay in a fiat system. Okay. They have 60% or so are still paying in U.S. dollars. Uh, but there is a growing number that's settling their bill in Bitcoin. And then any other any other insight that you have for business owners who are listening to this right now, who are thinking about accepting Bitcoin or want to maybe kind of take the next step? What are some some just ways of thinking or maybe some particular tools and resources, business services, business partners that you would recommend? So if they're if we're talking local to to the island of Roatan, I would certainly uh, encourage people to just learn about Bitcoin. There's a awesome group of people uh, that are running a Bitcoin center. It's the first Bitcoin ATM machine on the island. So you've got a, uh, a group of, of educators that are highly talented that I would say take advantage of that. On a bigger scale, you know, uh, the, the Bitcoin community is a growing community. It's a, it's a large community. And a lot of people are, are part of that community on principle more than anything else, right? They, they, they really believe and want to stand for what Bitcoin uh, stands for. So I would say that as a business owner, just from a tactical, a strategic standpoint, you know, you, you want to be able to transact and accept Bitcoin because it's a growing demographic. You know, if you look at the key phrases, the key terms on Google Trend, there's some different um, uh, phrases that people are searching for. There are in, an increasing number of them that have the word Bitcoin in them. You know, places to eat that accept Bitcoin, scuba shops that accept Bitcoin. So optimizing your business for Bitcoin, not just in writing and, 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 and for the search engine world, but also just at the point of sale machine. Somebody walks in, they want to have a burger and they want to pay with Bitcoin. You would just uh, do yourselves a favor. It's a very simple, you know, 30 minute process to set up a wallet, understand what you're doing. And then once you do that, you know, you, you, you might be able to capitalize and 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 get get more business out of it. So um, last thing I'd say is that there is a growing number of maps out there, you know, that are used inside of the Bitcoin community when people try to orient themselves or travel to Bitcoin friendly jurisdictions. And, you know, if you can get your business listed and mentioned there that can only be a better a good vertical for you a new a new option well i would also like to talk for a second about honduras and maybe Roatan in particular i know you said you do some um you've done some writing when it comes to uh, tourism some content creation I, I i love honduras lived there for three years travel around visited Roatan only once but maybe sell people on honduras i feel like uh they're not in the news that much and when they are sometimes they have uh, a bad rap so Sell people on on Roatan real quick and Honduras as a whole. Why would people want to go visit Honduras? Yeah, so the, obviously the first thing is there's definitely a lot of noise out there. You don't have to travel far to find a forum that you know will say poor things about Roatan and, and probably uh, or Honduras at large, and probably some of it is warranted and, and true. Uh, but like any place, you know, I live uh, primarily in Houston, Texas, and that can be a violent place too. You know, so just keep your wits about you anywhere you go. Uh, travel during daylight hours in areas that are probably you know safer than others and. And you'll be okay. But in, in terms of Roatan in particular, uh, people have been coming to Roatan long before it was on the cruise ship circuit, you know, and they were coming there uh, oftentimes uh, with great inconvenience, you know, having to take an extra flight or an extra uh, boat ride to get there. And the reason people have been doing that for such a long time is because it's, it's, it is beautiful. So the water around Roatan uh, can be matched but it cannot be beat. I mean, it is world-class water, okay? And you pair that with a tropical environment, with an island that has a lot of uh, hills and topography to it, you know? Uh, and then uh, you pair that with its history where you've had, you know, British colonized, Spanish colonized, it now belongs to Honduras. So you get a real infusion of, of, of uh, diverse sort of heritage there. So. It's a it's a great island to come. If you're a fisherman, uh, you can be deep water, you know, big game fishing uh, within, you know, a quarter of a mile from the water's edge, you know, or less. If you're a scuba diver, you're in, you know, a barrier reef like no other. You know, you're actually in the greatest, uh, largest barrier reef on the northern hemisphere. So. Um, there, there is quite a bit to do in terms of uh, uh, 
water sports and you know cultural experience to come to Roatan. I, I strongly recommend it. I'm doing so myself. So I appreciate you sharing on the podcast today, Emilio. Do you have any final thoughts for business owners? Just final thoughts you'd like to share with the audience before we wrap up today's conversation? Hey, thank you for doing this, man. And just want to encourage you to keep keep up the good work and every bit counts. And so I wish you the best with your podcast and come visit us when you can. Will do. All right, Emilio, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure. You bet, buddy. Thank you. Well, friends, it's a wrap. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Business Bitcoinization Show. If you want to reach out to either me or Emilio, you can find our links down in the show notes. And if you're trying to figure out what to do for your next vacation, go to Roatan, stay in Prospera, and go scuba diving. As always, keep building, keep growing, and until next time, keep living and leading well. If you're a regular listener of the podcast, thank you. If you want to take a further step in your support for the show, you can help us grow by listening on Fountain, a value for value podcast app on iOS or Android. If you hear something you like that you disagree with or anything else, you can share it by sending some sats and adding a comment with your thoughts. Some of you have already done this and I appreciate it. I'm going to begin reading your boost on upcoming episodes. So if you have some insight or value to add, let the people know. Getting started with Fountain is easy. You can add Bitcoin to your Fountain wallet by using your fiat accounts or any lightning wallet and one of my favorite features is that once you're using the app you can earn sats just by listening on fountain check out the link in the show notes to get started with fountain today